you need to patch now. There is a critical vulnerability from Redis published this week. This is a 13-year-old bug that allows remote code execution via memory corruption in Lua, which is a popular scripting engine. In this video, we will have a glimpse on the technical details and explore a recently published POC in GitHub. These vulnerability received a CVS score of 10, which is the highest rating possible. This impacts a lot because this NoSQL database is widely used in cloud environments. This was named as Redis Shell because it allows remote code execution via use after free memory corruption bug. That is triggered using an exploit payload in Lua, which then allows escaping from the sandbox environment. As a more devastating effect, the attacker is given access to the host system. But what is a use after free? System memory is a scarce resource. Once a thread uses a chunk of memory, it should release it afterwards. That is important, so it will be available for the other threads. Now, if a thread tries to use a chunk of memory that was previously released and not intended for him, this is where use after free happens. It can have unexpected side effect or worse, it can crash the application. But attackers are leveraging this to insert malicious payload to trigger a code execution. So this is the key point of this vulnerability. It is important to note that this is the first time Redis had this kind of security hole. And what makes it more severe is that most Redis installation doesn't require any authentication. Due to the severity of the vulnerability, the full technical details haven't been disclosed by the researchers. But a few days ago, there is a public POC that has been released in GitHub based from the README. This is a lab environment that demonstrates the vulnerability, so let's try this out. There is a Docker Compose file, so we can just start the lab using this command. We see here that the container was successfully started. And there are no errors from the startup logs. To trigger the exploit, we need to target our local host on port 6380. We will also tell the script to perform all commands. Later, we will explore what are those. Looks like it ran successfully, so let's quickly understand the output. First, it tried to connect and see if Lua is enabled. Then it performs the version detection and confirmed that the image we are using is vulnerable. After that, it tried to trigger a use after free payload. We will also see in a bit how the payload looks like. Then it performs some Lua sandbox escape using various modules that execute shell commands. And lastly, it tried another memory corruption payload. It doesn't seem it did anything malicious, and it says at the bottom that this POC is simplified and the actual exploit involves a more complex memory manipulation. So let's go ahead and see what's inside the script. Thanks to the author of this script for publishing this POC for awareness. Let's quickly see what are the different functions. We have eight functions, but the interesting amongst them are these. So let's go ahead and start looking at them. Let's first see how it checks if Lua is enabled. It tries to run this eval method and see if it will return test. R is the Redis connection object that is being passed to this function. This will be the same connection object that will be used on others. The eval method accepts two parameters. Let's go inside the Redis CLI to better understand how eval works. The first parameter eval accepts is the actual Lua script you want to run. Then the next one is the number of Redis keys the Lua script will access. So let's say we want to execute a script that will return hello, but we don't want to access any Redis keys, so we will just set the second argument to zero. This is how the output will look like. So back to the script, that is the purpose of these two arguments. If it didn't return anything or it encountered an error, that means Lua is not enabled. The next function is to trigger the use after free payload. We have a note here saying this is a simplified version only so we don't expect any complicated technique. It put the Lua script as a multi-line string inside this variable. The local function is used to create a meta table. In Lua, a table is just like an array on other programming languages. A meta table is another type of table that defines the behavior of a different table. In this case, we create an empty table T. Then a meta table MT. Inside this meta table, we will print something on the logs whenever a garbage collection runs. So, in order to associate the empty table with our meta table, we will use the set meta table function. So, this technique is just a way of executing something whenever an event is run. To trigger a garbage collection, we will use this function and run it inside a loop 10 times. At the bottom, we will run the whole local function by returning it. As we learned from the earlier section, we can run a Lua script using eval function, so this is what we are doing here. As you notice, the malicious code is very simple as it just prints something on the log file. Now let's see how this sandbox escape function works. So this checks if it can execute some shell commands inside the host system. We have here the different modules accepting various commands. If you notice the name of the modules is fairly similar with other programming languages like Python. In typical Lua installation, modules like OS are preloaded, meaning you don't need to import them explicitly. But in Redis, they remove those modules since they contain several dangerous functions. 
The demonstration on the lab environment contains a simplified payload, but in real exploit, we would see something like this. Let's explore this last function, which is to trigger advanced memory corruption payload. There are two functions here, create spray and trigger corruption. Let's explore the first one. It creates an empty table, then it loops 1,000 times. For each iteration, it will fill up each table index with 1,024 characters. So, same with other functions, this is benign and doesn't do anything aside from probably forcing an error on the application. That function is then called on the next one which is the trigger corruption. The format of this is similar on what we saw earlier. It creates an empty table. It creates a meta table that will trigger on a garbage collection event. Then it will associate that meta table to the empty one. Lastly, it will trigger the garbage collection. This is slightly different from the basic use after free payload, which triggers garbage collection 10 times. So in summary, this script isn't doing anything malicious. It just performs check if the target is vulnerable. And it just uses random junks as an exploit payload, which doesn't perform code execution. But this POC serves as a blueprint to the actual exploit code. As the time of creating this video, there are already 44 forks and 206 stars. So. Who knows, maybe one of them be able to create a full POC. For the time being, it is better to upgrade your Redis installation if it is used by applications exposed over the internet. And we will wait for the full technical details from Wiz. I hope you learned something today. If you find my content valuable, please support me by liking this video and subscribing to my channel. See you on the next one.